As everybody knows, early voting is underway here in Ohio. Uh, it's election month, and I am here to give a couple of updates on matters that have come to our attention in the last uh, number of weeks. Uh, the first, first issue is uh, an allegation of ballot harvesting that was raised uh, in September. Uh, this involved a congressional candidate uh, who was having a Facebook uh, forum uh, with a Kaisela Fambro. Uh, during the conversation between the candidate uh, and Ms. Fambro, uh, the question came up of uh, to whom ballots may be delivered, and uh, Ms. Fambro. Uh, indicated that they should, uh, that voters should take their ballots to local Democratic Party headquarters uh, or to uh, the NAACP uh, and drop them off. Of course, uh, this is incorrect as a matter of Ohio law, and in fact, uh, anybody that did this would be committing a felony of the fourth degree. Um, our uh, Folks went out and uh, interviewed uh, several people, including Ms. Fambro. Uh, it turns out that the candidate, Kate Schroeder, and Ms. Fambro had not uh, personally uh, discussed this uh, program and didn't even really know each other before the Facebook post occurred, the Facebook Live, um, and that the candidate confessed that she was unaware what the rules were, although her campaign staff uh, quickly advised her that uh, what Ms. Fambro was advising on the Facebook page was uh, illegal under Ohio law. Uh, it's what we call ballot harvesting. And the uh, Ms. Fambro also uh, said that she was unaware. She took remedial action and advised uh, p her staff in a memo what Ohio law was. She apparently operates in several states and um, the alternative uh, locations, ballot harvesting, are uh, legal in, in some places in the United States. Ohio law under 3509.05 allows a voter to return a ballot to the director or a group of closely related people who I will call family members. Um, that includes a father, mother, a father-in-law, mother-in-law, grandparents, a brother or sister, whether of whole blood or half. Uh, it does not, however, mean the brotherhood and sisterhood of humankind. Uh, it has to be a, the blood relation. Uh, a son or daughter, an adopting parent, adopted child, step-parent, step-child, an aunt, an uncle, a nephew, or a niece. Uh, the offense is called um, knowing possession uh, of a ballot, and it is a felony of the fourth degree in Ohio. Uh, so we did not find in our review of this matter that there was a prosecutable offense. It's important to recognize that this uh, conversation happened over a month prior uh, to any ballots even being available, so it would have been impossible to have uh, committed a crime. Nonetheless, I am reporting on this uh, not only for sake of uh, com being complete, uh, but also to warn people that uh, ballot harvesting is not legal in Ohio and in fact possessing somebody else's ballot unless you're one of these close family members is a felony uh, and you can be prosecuted for it. Uh, secondly, there have been, there's been discussion of voter intimidation. Um, it is a, a felony of the fifth degree in Ohio to uh, quote unquote, hinder an elector from uh, voting or attempting to vote. I raise this because uh, there's been discussions about observing polls, and uh, it's important that the conduct surrounding this complies with Ohio law. 
First of all, uh, observers are not allowed in polling places uh, except under very specific, limited, and supervised uh, circumstances that are set out in the Ohio Revised Code. And uh, Secretary of State Frank LaRose has talked about this in the past. I will simply reiterate that uh, observers are not allowed uh, inside the polling stations uh, except under those carefully delineated and regulated circumstances. Uh, further, outside 100 feet from the entrance uh, is considered public space and uh, relatively unregulated. However, it's possible to take what might otherwise be lawful actions uh, that could be deemed to be hindering a voter. And I strongly urge uh, everyone to uh, act in a way that is uh, conspicuously and unquestioningly uh, intimidation free, hindrance free. And I would say look in your heart. If what you're thinking is you're hoping that those people don't vote, whether uh, we're talking about you know, liberals who are hoping that uh, the Trumpers won't vote or whether we're talking about people on the Republican side of the aisle that are hoping that those uh, crazy rioters don't show up. Uh, it's not your job to prevent people from voting or to hinder them for voting or to make them think twice about voting. And in Ohio, depending on the facts and the ability to prove the case, it can be a felony of the fifth degree. Err on the side of caution. Hands off the polling places. Hands off the vote. Finally, uh, in September, my office received a complaint from uh, United States Representative Marsha Fudge from the Cleveland area. Uh, the Attorney General's office received two other complaints as well regarding a uh, telephone call, a uh, robocall that was placed into what appears to be minority areas uh, in Ohio, uh, Pennsylvania, and Michigan. Uh, the calls purported to advise the people uh, on the other end of the call that they ought to be really careful about um, uh, asking for an absentee ballot because bill collectors uh, were going to mine that information and come after them. Now, we found that there were 67,396 67, calls uh, on this message, uh, uh, these robocalls. Of those, 3,449 uh, calls were answered by a person or an answering machine in Ohio. Uh, the calls go back to uh, the number of a Jack Berkman, uh, and it appears that they were financed by Jack Berkman and another person named Jacob Wall. Uh, I'm confirming the identities of these two individuals because they had previously been reported in the news media. The Secretary of State also re uh, received these telephone calls, uh, or these complaints rather, and referred this to the FBI for review as a potential uh, violation of the Voting Rights Act. I have sent our information to uh, Cuyahoga County Prosecutor Michael O'Malley, who has agreed to review the file to determine whether there are any uh, criminal violations under Ohio law. It's important to recognize that unlike some other states, uh, the Attorney General of Ohio does not have primary prosecuting authority. Uh, that exists at the local level with the local prosecuting attorney uh, and that uh, by and large the Attorney General's uh, uh, involvement in, in a criminal case is limited to situations where we have been invited in uh, by a local prosecutor. I have assured Prosecutor O'Malley that 
uh, our office is available and will continue to uh, support his efforts and any additional investigation that uh, he finds necessary, we're ready to help. Ohio has an excellent system. It's easy to vote in Ohio. Uh, it is a secure and well-supervised system that is well, well mm, is supervised by the fact that there are two Democrats and two Republicans uh, in every precinct, in every county, that are supervising the way the election happens. Um, the Secretary of State, Frank Rose, uh, and his staff are working tirelessly with all of the local officials of both parties to make sure that Ohio's election is, again, fair and clean. We do have uh, felony statutes, tough criminal penalties, for people who skate the ragged edge. And my message, uh, I just want to add my voice to Frank LaRose, uh, don't try this stuff in Ohio uh, because there will be a price to pay. Let's have a clean election, a fair election, make sure that every vote is counted, and uh, that means you have to cast your ballot. So let's vote, Ohio.